Great. So we're delighted to be joined uh, by Anjali Ashrakar, the Deputy Executive Director of UNAIDS, who's here to let, brief you on Let Communities Lead. Please, welcome. Terrific. Thank you so much. Uh, let me first just um, say it's wonderful to be back here uh, to talk with you. And as you all know, every year on December 1st, the world comes together to commemorate World AIDS Day. It's a moment where we can all unite in solidarity to show support for the 39 million people that are living with HIV around the world, but also to remember and honor the 40.4 million lives that have been lost due to AIDS-related illnesses. The World AIDS, this World AIDS Day actually comes at a momentous time. We know that there is a path to end AIDS we are celebrating the fact that there's tremendous progress that we've seen in the global HIV response. AIDS deaths, for example, have decreased by nearly 70% since they peaked in the early 2000s. There are fewer new infections now than ever before. This is great progress that countries around the world have made. But it's important to note that the job is not yet done. Every single minute, a life is lost to AIDS. Every week, 4,000 adolescent girls and young women are newly infected by HIV. And still, 9.2 million people around the world that are living with HIV do not have access to life-saving treatment. So this is not a fate. We can change it, and we know how to do that. The path to end AIDS has been trailblazed by communities. Countries succeed when communities on the front li lines of the AIDS response leads the way. And so that's why this year, the theme for World AIDS Day is let communities lead. The evidence is laid out in the World AIDS Day report that we've just released today in advance of World AIDS Day. It's the communities that know best. They know how to design, how to implement, how to monitor HIV programs and strategies to reach the people most in need. And it is the communities that will be the ones that sustain the HIV response into the future. Communities and countries have been showing the way and leading by example. In Nigeria, for example, Communities have delivered services in far-reach areas, and we see that 64% increase of access to treatment because of communities. In Namibia, we see youth community organizations that have used e-bikes to deliver services to young people who often cannot attend clinics because they're in school. In Ukraine, it was the communities that saved people living with HIV they ensured that through war, life-saving treatment continued when people weren't able to get to hospitals or clinics. In South Africa, Thailand, and Brazil, it was the community grassroots movements that led those iconic struggles in the 1990s and early 2000s, advocating on the streets, in courts, and in parliaments to ensure life-saving, affordable medicines were available and accessible to all. This resulted in the costs of that have decreased from $25,000 per person per year in 1995 to as low as $70 per person for life-saving antiretroviral treatment that we see today. This is the power of community. There's no doubt that community leadership builds stronger and healthier societies. And again, that is why this World AIDS Day, it's not a moment to only just honor community leadership, it's also a moment for us to call to action, to governments to fully support communities, to organizations to fully support the life-saving work, and to remove the barriers that prohibit the way that communities can lead. Too often, communities are under-acknowledged, they're under-resourced, and in some places, they're under attack. In 2021, member states of the United Nations renewed their commitment to supporting communities in the HIV response, supporting a global AIDS strategy and targets for communities in the AIDS response. 
but we're not delivering for communities in the way that we need to. So on this World AIDS Day, we want to reinforce the role of communities. We want to ensure that they are allowed to lead as we've seen that they can. So we're urging all to first acknowledge community leadership, ensure that communities lead, the lead in the roles that we know they can and that they're central to the HIV response. Second, resource communities. We need to ensure that community leaderships are, prop are properly resourced. We've seen a decrease in funding around the globe to community organizations. That must increase. And third and finally, we need to protect communities. Protect everyone's human rights. Right now, anti-human rights, anti-women's rights, anti-democracy, and shrinking civil sp space has threatened the work of community organizations and communities themselves. This has both threatened them as leaders in the response, in the HIV response, but it's also threatened the HIV response around the world. We have to remain hopeful and vigilant and continue to defend human rights of the communities that we serve. So just, I end with that communities are not in the way, they light the way. And today and this week on World AIDS Day, let's follow the theme and let communities lead. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Anja. We'll take some questions. Margaret Bashir. Thanks for the briefing. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, in 2020, I know UNAIDS was hoping to reach the 90-90-90 target. And I think that probably got thrown off by COVID in part, but it was already off track at the time. So where are you on the 90-90 target now? Please. Great. Thanks so much for that question. We are, we, we did get off track a bit, but I should say that there are a handful of countries that in fact have reached the 95, 95, 95 targets um, early. The goal is to have, for all of us, to end AIDS as a public health threat by 2030, but we are very proud to say, and we released over the summer, data that showed that countries like Botswana, Rwanda, Zimbabwe, and others have in fact reached at a national level the 95-95-95 targets. There are 16 other countries that are on their way to achieving those 95-95-95 targets, which is great. I do want to note, though, that while at a national level they're reaching the 95-95-95 targets, when we look at subpopulations, we lack far behind with children. They are not where they should be. Adolescent girls and young women and key populations. So we still have gaps to fill, even though at the national level we are approaching and achieving 95-95-95 targets. Could I just ask one other? On um, the issue of stigma associated with HIV and AIDS, do you find that uh, it's declining with time? We are struggling with issues related to stigma and discrimination. Um, we don't find that it's declining. It still continues to persist. It is a very strong barrier to access to services. We see stigma at all levels. We see stigma across the populations, across healthcare providers um, that are delivering services. Um, so battling stigma is still a high priority for all of us. We will not achieve um, the, the targets that we've set out unless we address um, stigma and discrimination, unless we address policies, for example, that, um, that, uh, that lead to lack of access to services. Um, but, but yeah, stigma and discrimination is still a very serious issue. And oftentimes is why these populations that I mentioned that where we still see gaps are still farthest left behind. Thank you. Deji, China Central Television. Hi, this is Shideji with China Central Television. Um, just a question. The UN AIDS is set a target to end the um, an AIDS as a public health threat by 2030. So um, we know that in some areas we got progress, but on the other, on the other hand, in some other air regions, we saw the increase of AIDS, HIV, uh, AIDS uh, positive uh, people. So, but 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 overall, do you think we're moving on the right direction? And what more specific efforts should we do to achieve that target by 2030? 
please. Sure, thanks. Thanks for that question. Um, you're, you're right. We are making tremendous progress, like, like I noted, around the globe. Now, and, and I, I, I indicated, you know, we're seeing AIDS deaths drop, we're seeing new infections lower than they've been before, but, but I noted those gaps. There are 1.3 million new HIV infections that occur every year. Okay, that's just what we saw last year. That is, that is striking. That means we are not, we are, we are leaving major populations behind and we are not closing the gaps that need to be closed. So in order for us to achieve the, the, um, the targets that we've set and the world has agreed to, ending AIDS as a public health threat by 2030, we have to accelerate our HIV prevention efforts, particularly targeting populations that we're missing, key populations, for example, LGBTQI plus populations, children, adolescent girls, and young women. We have to close the treatment gaps. We are seeing children far, far behind the adult population on, on access to life-saving treatment. In this time and space, there's, it's unacceptable that children are as far behind as they are. So we've got to close the treatment gaps. And what we have to do is ensure that we're putting in place the ability for countries and communities to sustain the HIV response. So the final thing I'll just say is it is achievable. It is possible. We are moving in the right direction. We have, we've said when we released the data last summer that um, of all of the sustainable development goals, the one that we're focused on, SDG 3.3, is actually moving in the right direction. And that is because of the progress we're making on the HIV response. But that progress is fragile. Um, and we have to continue to close those gaps that I noted earlier um, with certain populations. And we have to be able to, to address the rising new infections and really accelerate our prevention efforts. Thank you. Yes, uh, Ephraim. Thank you so much. Um, a question about COVID as well and the correlation between COVID and uh, you know, the, the fight against H HIV. Uh, we have heard that in some countries, actually, um, uh, the pandemic has uh, helped decrease the number of infections because people were more isolated and for very different reasons. How do you overall explain the, uh, what happened during the three year of the pandemic and its effect on the struggle to end this, um, to end AIDS? Yeah, thank you. Thanks for that question. You know, um, COVID and the <coughs> pandemic and, and addressing the HIV pandemic at the same time, dual pandemics um, was, a, was a real challenge for all countries and all communities. Um, what we have seen is that in countries where there is a high HIV burden, um, for example, on, in the African continent, in Sub-Saharan Africa, where there's been a tremendous amount of work that has happened to, um, to address HIV, um, and we're seeing incredible progress on the HIV AIDS response. In addition to tackling HIV and AIDS, the, the response also contributed to stronger health systems, laboratory systems, surveillance systems, healthcare workers, community health workers, supply chain systems, um, clinical facilities, and the like. Those strength systems for health, those strengthened health systems for the HIV response were instrumental in helping countries also com combat COVID-19. So where, so where COVID devastated many parts of the world, what we saw in Africa, yes, we saw a struggle. We, and it was challenging to maintain services for HIV. We also saw a bit of silver lining in that the health systems that were strengthened and in place for the HIV response, helped countries respond to COVID and other health threats. Um, so that's a bit of what we saw. We, as a globe, are still trying to ensure that we are um, bouncing back from the COVID response because indeed we had to do everything to protect people living with HIV um, during that time. But, but as I said, the very systems that were put in place for HIV were in fact those that countries use to help respond to COVID. So that was an added benefit. Great. 
Deputy Executive Director, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, hopefully we'll see you before another year. Sounds good. Take care. Thank you so much. Thanks. It's very interesting what you said. There's a good correlation between